Our next guest on the show was the first gaming hire at Justin TV and would later become a founding member of a little website we know as Twitch. He joins us today to discuss his latest project, Juked.gg. You know it because we've talked about it on the show multiple times. It's our lifesaver, our bread and butter when it comes to weekend esports watching. So let's bring on the man in charge. Welcome to the center ring, Ben Gold Haber. Hello, sir. Thank you for having me, and thanks for uh, thanks for giving us the shout outs. I mean, uh, we're what we're doing is like by esports fans for esports fans. So every time I hear those those magical words that we're saving people time and and effort and helping them discover new esports content. I, I get very happy. So I ran across this. I don't even know. I mean, a couple months back, you had started tweeting about it. I was a follower of yours already. Um, obviously, you have an impressive resume with what you've done. And I told Tim, I was like, Tim, this is going to be our lifeline. Like this, this is exactly what we need. Instead of me opening up 10 different screens, trying to follow everything that's going on, it's like you guys have become my esports calendar. I mean, that's really what it what it's become for me. So it, it's great, man. We love it. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm glad to and be what, here. What, so one of the things I love about Juked, and for like I said, our listeners are, are somewhat familiar with it. It's, it's a website that aggregates uh, from multiple. I mean, I, I take it it's just the top viewed esports stream. Is it only on Twitch right now? Yeah. Um, actually, we've only built functionality to embed Twitch. We're, we're working on Mixer and YouTube as well. Um, probably Facebook in the future. But at this point, probably 97% of uh, every major esports events are at least on Twitch. They might be on the other platforms too, but they're also on Twitch. So right. uh, we've we we've built the Twitch functionality and we're like, okay, probably a we smart can move on decision. to other stuff. Probably yeah. a smart but, I mean, We start. want to do everything. We want, like, I know some people prefer watching on YouTube. Um, so we want to we want to aggregate everything in the long well, term. And I want to pick your brain about this later because I want to stay unjuked for now. But you never know with the way these platforms are pushing, right? Like what they sign over and who knows, maybe we'll see ESL exclusively back on a certain one, right? So that will have to kind of force your hand in stretching it out. But again, yeah, uh, yeah. The, the way it's aggregated and everything, it's great for people like us. Like our show, we're a multi esports show. We don't focus on one thing. We stretch it out. And I think mm -hmm. our listeners kind of follow that trend. And it's like for the longest time, it's, I'm not a big League of Legends guy. And, you know, I'm, I, I, uh, like FGC events and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of like the smaller ones too. And they just get buried on Twitch, right? It's, it's difficult to find unless you just know your, your routine of like the 10 different websites you look for calendar sake of it. Was that like an inspiration for you? Cause I know you also love, you know, the smaller esports. You like FGC and, starcraft and things like that was this built somewhat selfishly for you <laughs> i think uh most good startups are built by people who have who actually have that problem um so that is exactly why we built juke just as esports fans we felt this pain all the time this this annoyance that you have to go to 25 different websites resources subreddits social media accounts discord servers just to hope that you happen to see when things are live. Um, so that's, that's really the problem that we're trying to solve, uh, despite the fact that there's like 20 plus esports out there that we're, we're trying to cover. We're doing our best to cover every single one of them. And um, yeah, I, I, I totally love the long tail, I guess, of esports, not, maybe not the biggest ones, but you're going to catch me watching a Smash stream, not the CSGO tournament that's happening most weekends. Um, I'll, I'll watch the CSGO majors, I'll watch League Worlds, I'll watch the International, I'll watch all of the major stuff, no matter what the game is. But uh, I'm more more uh, more likely to be watching a fighting game or a Quake stream uh, than than uh, a medium tier, tier, tier like CSGO event, I guess. Yeah. Now, just last week, you guys went in out of closed beta. Now, technically, you're in open beta, but for the sake of the conversation, you're out there, right? I yeah. Mean one hundred percent. Yeah. Unless Duke you're Fortnite GG. and you're gonna be in early access for like four years. But right now well, <laughs> it's the new normal, yeah. <laughs> That's right. You are out there. So how has the launch been then? It's been what, what was the official launch date? Wednesday? Yeah. Um eight days ago. 
from recording of this. Uh, so yeah, we're we're a weekend, and obviously on day one we got a bit of exposure through some press outlets. All of our good friends in the industry were helping and giving us a little signal boost, which was really really nice and very very much appreciated. Uh, but it's been really awesome to just get more people's hands on the product. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, every single day we're doing everything we can to make it better. Um, we're not where we need to be yet, uh, but more people, more feedback means that we're going to be able to get better quicker. Uh, so, and like I said, like literally every single tweet and believe me, I'm reading every tweet. Um, that's like, oh my God, Juke, I just watched, I just watched a Starcraft tournament for the first time in years. I haven't watched WoW in forever. I've never watched this esport, and I tuned in for the first time. Or my life is so much easier following all the top games and teams that I care about. So much easier now. Every time I see that, I just am super happy. So um, yeah, it's been it's been really fun to get it out to more people. Has there been one thing that's? I know y'all did a really good job of doing a lot of outreach and, and talking to your fans and asking them, you know what can we do? What can we add? How can we make this better? Has there been one specific thing that seems to come up over and over again that either is a feature you want to add down the line or something that's just difficult to integrate at this point in time because of the technology? Yeah, definitely. I think the number the one, uh, number one request that we've gotten probably by far is uh, we want ways to filter and customize Juked more to our, our tastes, uh, which is honestly a topic that I'm like, I feel like we have to do well. We have to we have to tackle this well because there are some other apps out there that help you follow esports and they're good. I don't want to take anything away from them. But when you sign up for these other apps, you say which games you care about. And then like like I said, I watch the big Counter-Strike tournaments. I don't really watch it all the time. So as a as a user, when I sign up, I'm not necessarily gonna say I like Counter-Strike, add it to my favorites. And then when I go to but then every single time I ever use that app, I never see Counter-Strike ever. So like we, we're going to do preferences, uh, but it's probably going to shift the order of things and not remove them altogether because I want to, I want you to watch Evo. I want you to watch the Smash tournaments, even if you don't today. Right. It's funny that you bring that up too. So I, I spoke with uh, your partner, Chris. Right, that's his name. I'm, I'm not yeah. screwing, screwing that up. Yes, All right, Chris. You're right. I, so I spoke with him. Chan Man. Chan Man. That's see, that's how I know him. Was Chan Man, but yeah, you're mm-hmm. CEO now, right? So you go by your name. That, that's how that works. <laughs> uh, whatever, dude. You can call me Fish Sticks. Whatever <laughs> you want. Uh, so I was talking to Chris, and obviously, well respected in the esports world too. And he asked me, he was like, "So what's what's one thing that you would like to see happen to Juke?" And I said, "One thing that I would not like to see is forced filters." for the exact reason that you said, like I enjoy going to the homepage. That's mainly what I watch most of the time, unless an event like the world cup for overwatch happens and they split it up between six different streams. And for whatever ungod forsaken reason, don't offer a multi stream themselves to do it. Right. So that's where you guys came in very handy that weekend. So I thank you for that. Uh, But I was like, I enjoy going to that homepage and seeing games that I normally wouldn't watch, but it's like, well, clearly 70,000 people are watching this. It should probably be something I'm also watching. Yeah. uh, We were kind of always expected that the front page would be like our doorstep. And then you go tune in to watch an individual stream. But I feel you, man, when, when you have, uh, especially during those like super crazy weekends, when you have like, 15 live matches which has actually happened multiple times since we since we've been beta testing and like five of them have over a hundred thousand viewers uh, especially when you're in a situation like that i really like just sitting on the home page and just uh you know because a lot of the time when i'm watching esports it's not like i'm sitting on the couch only watching esports you know right. i'm playing a game i'm browsing reddit i'm on discord whatever uh, but it's like the perfect thing to have on your side monitor and you can just uh, kind of follow all of the action and then uh, peek over every once in a while and be like, oh, snap, like you, ca- you catch some good plays and things like that. Um, so, yeah, I like the front page a lot. I like how it came out. Now, I know because you guys, like you said, you're still in beta and I have to imagine even when you're out of beta, you're going to be very open to uh, ideas and everything. Like that's one thing that I've noticed you guys are very active on 
In fact, when I did like a beta survey, it was the next day. That's when I got the email from Chris, like asking about one of the comments I made in that. So you guys are very uh, active in your own community, which is great. You have a Discord server, you know, so if our listeners are interested in that, you can join the Juked Discord and be a part of that development as well. What is it then that you guys are looking for then? Like when you're looking at branching out juked apart from the filters or anything like that, like where from a business side, are you like, we're stumped and we need to outsource for our fans on this one? Um, like, is there one particular part of the website where you're like, I know there's something that I could do here or something like, or even like something that a, a fan or a, you know, a user gave you an idea of, and you're like, damn i never thought of that um yeah i think the main thing that we're well we're talking to users every single day to to get their feedback on the product and we've gotten lots and lots and lots of ideas um i think like not to sound conceited or whatever but we we have pretty much nothing we hear is like is like brand new or it's rare to hear something that we've never even thought of before it's just a matter of prioritizing what we build uh, because our backlog of products and features is growing, honestly, so much faster than we're chipping away at it. Mm-hmm. We're just constantly adding new things to the pile. So I think it's really useful to talk to users to pri- prioritize what we build, uh, refine things. Obviously, um, we've had some issues like, I think we've got this awesome remind me feature where you can set reminders for individual matches. But honestly, we look at the data and no one's using it. So like, talking to users like, oh, I didn't even notice that. So, um, you know, obviously we can get some good feedback on the UI and the design and make sure that everything's clear. Uh, and then it helps us really prioritize things. Another thing that we get from our users is whenever we're missing an event, that's uh, super dope um, that we shouldn't be missing. They're going to let us know really quickly. Um, you know, for instance, much kind of to my surprise, I know mobile esports, mobile gaming esports is massive in China, India, Brazil, um, but a lot of like our Western viewers too have also been like asking about where's the mobile esports love. Uh, so you know that that helps us prioritize where we're putting our resources there too when it comes to aggregating all of the tournaments and events uh, and which games we're focusing on. So I think that's you know I, I'm trying to rack my brain to think if there's like one crazy awesome feature that we had never thought of before. Um, but no, I think like, it's generally just really helpful for prioritizing, refining the product, uh, and then deciding what events we need to add as well. And now the calendar just got added on there, right? That's, that's a newer feature that was just recently added. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the calendar got a complete faceless facelift redesign and we just launched this last week, uh, the ability to search through the calendar, uh, and filter by your favorite games. So you can go to the calendar right now and. If you want to see everything in ESL one pro league or whatever, you can just type ESL and you're going to instantly see all of that. Um, so yeah, there's, we're adding new stuff all the time. Um, so it's coming through the pipe. And one thing we, anything, we haven't even, no, go ahead. Anish. I say anything that you can give us a sneak peek on that that's coming up next that people should be excited about. Yes. Um, preferences. We're working on it right now. Um, so again, we're, we're trying to find that delicate balance of like, how do we make juke more catered to your tastes, but still sh- be able to show you the dope shit if we if if uh, if you if you might have missed it otherwise? Um, so preferences are in the pipeline as we speak, um, and that's probably the biggest thing that we're working on right now. So is that I mean, I like? Could, yeah. So I'm a user. So this is like self interest now. Yeah. Because I even told Chris this would be dope. If like I could go in there and just say, rather than like saying like, okay, I prefer Counter Strike and this game and that game in particular, but if I could just say, I just want to see all the top FPS games going on or all the top MOBA games going on, is that the type of preferences we're talking about? We're gonna do it by game and okay. also by team. Um, oh. I think we, we've asked, we, we've talked to a lot of users about and done some surveys and polls, and and. I don't think there's actually correlation between being a CSGO fan and being a Call of Duty fan. Um, I I think there's actually probably negative correlation between being a You're league prob- fan and like a I said, fan. We, we, uh, because we do this podcast, I think we're yeah. in the minority. I think you're absolutely yeah. right, though, because like Overwatch and Counter-Strike hate each other. 
Like, it, I wouldn't go that far. But it's few and far between. But there's there's like weird correlations too. Like league fans like tend to like Smash a lot. Like little things like that that we found. And yeah. So, and that's all yeah. something that you guys kind of find in the background with your data of like what people are clicking on or whatnot. Yeah, and also just from even before we started working on Juked, we we did a couple of surveys and we we're kind of looking at that data to help define what we built. Um, but yes, yes. All right, that's interesting then. Uh, one other feature on the website too that we haven't even brought up because obviously Juked, you, you guys kind of, you feature the live events and everything there and aggregating it. But what's more important to me is the very organized VOD system. Mm. Like that right there, again, selfishly speaking from a podcaster's point of view, but even from just a, a fan's point of view, I don't have to wake up at 6 a.m. <laughs> to watch the League of Legends finals. It's just I can go to Juked and go to the VOD, right? Ah, uh, you are one of our one of the 5% of our users who are actually using VODs right now. Really? Uh, surprising I mean, <laughs> to me. Well, I, may, I may sound kind of like, I'm not trying to be whiny. We have a lot of work this to do to This is the spot to, like, to whine. Look, you can whine to our listeners and tell them to use the VOD. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, you should use the VOD system because um, you can filter by game. We have a we have an engine that, that kind of shows you the most relevant VODs, that just like whatever has the most views over the last couple of days. Um, and you can search too. So you can search for your favorite teams, um, search for your tournaments. And yes, I think it's really good. And you're not the first person that said that to me. I've heard a couple of my friends have been like, dude, I love your VOD functionality, but the majority of people come to see what's live now. Um, I think it's a, it's a UI challenge for us. It's like, how, how do we, uh, you know, especially when there aren't as many live, interesting live events, there's almost always something live, like literally 95% right. of the, of 24 hours every day there's something live but uh, maybe there are times where we do show vods a little yeah. bit higher above the fold yeah yeah i also think too probably like your traditional your standard esports fan probably aren't even used to like vods being a thing because they're they're not available yeah. like easily anywhere like you kind of have to look for them yeah i don't have i don't have any good data here I think the majority of esports views happen live, but right. my gut tells me that probably 35, 40% of esports views are also on, on, on VODs, mainly on YouTube. Um, but I think like YouTube just has this incredible automated recommendation engine, and I think that's how those happen. It's not really people like going to the ESL YouTube channel. They probably just watched enough Counter-Strike matches and right. then pops it on the front page. Recommending it. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. It's funny that you mentioned live events going on. You know, for me, one of my biggest uses for Juked is when I don't know what I want to watch. You know, when I don't know what's on um, or I'm not looking for that particular event, the first thing I do is is go to Juked and just let it kind of run. I mean, I let it show me what's going on rather than me like targeting a particular event. And that's been one of my favorite things to just constantly stay engaged, you know, like see what's going on, watch the next big event or understand like, oh man, there's a StarCraft thing going on today. Like I never would have looked for it. I never would have went and clicked on the StarCraft tab should I have been on Twitch or, or whatever at the time looking for something. So that that's really been one of my favorite things is I don't know what to watch. I don't know what I'm looking for. Let me turn this on and bam, I got five or six options right there that I can, that I can enjoy. So it's been great. Yeah, I think there's two use cases that like two really common use cases for Juked. One is... Oh, Worlds is going on this weekend. Instead of trying to remember twitch.tv slash blah, blah, blah. Or I guess Worlds is not the best example because everyone everyone knows about Worlds. But um, let's say it's like a Counter Strike. I'd say Smash tournaments. Yeah. Like yeah, those Smash are perfect because that Counter sometimes gets buried on Twitch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so so the one use case is hey, I, I remember, I think there's an event happening this weekend. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, um, you know, whatever Smash tournaments have. I know that was happening this weekend. Oh, yeah. And also, by the way, Smash tournaments do not announce what channel they're going to be streamed on until two days before. <laughs> Believe me, I know this because I try to stay on top of this, and it's, God, it's a pain. It's seriously so annoying. But it it could be VG Bootcamp. It could be BTS Smash. It could be even Matchup Gaming, which is, like, a weird name for a channel. Um, and you never know. So 
I think that's one use case is like, oh, hey, I know this event is happening. I'm going to just go to Juked because I know I'll find it there instantly. And then the other use case, which is exactly exactly what you just said, is like, I'm bored. I'm on my lunch break. I'm home from work. It's Sunday morning, whatever. And I just want to find some entertainment. And hopefully, I think we're solving for both of those use cases pretty well at this point. You know, one thing that just made me think of this is, is there going to be a mobile app for Juke at any point? Yes. Um, I don't know when. You made me think yes. of it when you just said work. So I was like, oh, yeah, that's actually... Yes, that's actually De definitely yeah. yes. Um, you know, we, we the website works; it's mobile friendly, um, ish. <laughs> Not one hundred percent mobile friendly, but we're getting there. But yeah, we definitely need to build an app as well. Dark mode—that's got to be like high on the the list of people requesting, right? It's up there. It's definitely up there. <laughs> that's all I want. Yeah. You give me dark mode, and like I'm, I'm set. The what? Like Chris kept asking me. He's like, "Well, what do you want on the website?" I'm like, "Chris, I don't know. The website's already pretty stinking convenient for me. Like, you've won me <laughs> over. I, I don't know what else you want from me. Uh, you know, maybe a maybe a podcast section with aggregated podcasts. <laughs> I, you're just throwing we're, it out there. Uh, maybe like a news it. section. <laughs> right? We're working um, on podcasts for sure. Hey, perfect, perfect. Let yeah. us know if you need any uh, suggestions. I know one. Uh, real quick to back away from jute because i would hate yeah. to have you on the show and not ask about this topic given your resume right you you have pretty much been in the esports the streaming world from the beginning what are your thoughts or your takeaways then with this recent mixer buying away twitch streamers and youtube taking away twitch streamers like is that going to be kind of that new norm where these top streamers sign on to websites or I, i'm just curious on your opinion on that Oh man, it's uh, you can go way back um, to the early days of Twitch uh, before Twitch was super super dominant in gaming streaming. Uh, we had a we had a competitor called Own 3D, and Own 3D's thing was like they had really good quality of service in Europe, and like Twitch didn't. Um, and back then it was like fifty fifty. Like Twitch, like Twitch basically gobbled up all of UStream live streams, like streamers way back when, but. There was a long time where it was the 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 content wars between Twitch and, and Own 3D, and problem problem with Own 3D was they didn't own any of their own infrastructure, so they were both spending a ton of money to acquire content, and it was way more expensive for them than it was for us in the early days of Twitch. But now you've got the situation where you've literally got the four biggest tech companies in the country. I mean. Microsoft, Google, <laughs> Amazon, Amazon, Facebook, literally like it's worth repeating that over and over again. It's like, it's not Mixer, it's Microsoft. It's not Twitch, right. it's Amazon. Yeah. It's no, not that's, YouTube, it's that's, Google. That's really who's paying uh, these guys, right? It's not, yeah. Mixer isn't right in the checkout, it's Microsoft. Yeah. So um, you've got, you've got the uh, biggest war chests imaginable uh, to play with when it comes to acquiring all these content creators. And um, I think it's, it's a, good thing for the creators obviously um i think if you go back through throughout the last nine years or eight and a half years since twitch launched everyone who went to another platform always came back always always um like you they would always lose a bunch of viewers and once the contract was up they'd go back um but i think we're at a point where that's not going to be the case anymore um, I think Mixer is a more credible threat than anyone gives them credit for. And YouTube is doing better and better than ever. And um, I think there's there's room for multiple competitors in this space. Uh, so um, it kind of, I, I mean, it's not great for consumers because I'd rather just find all of my favorite content creators in one place. Um, and that's truly been the case for live streaming. For, the, for a while now. For a long uh, time, yeah. Yeah. Um, not to say that YouTube hasn't made plays. They surely have. Like MLG. Does anyone remember MLG.tv? Yeah. Um, but I think we're at a place where it's going to stick. Uh, and we're going to see those streamers probably stay for a long, long time. And I think that's okay. I think it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, not happening in esports. That's that's the weird, that's the funny part. Is like right. Well, we, yeah. we 
like Facebook tried doing it with ESL and it just completely backfired with them. Like, yeah, they just got a disaster, a fraction and of the viewers. ECS, I think, did it with YouTube there for a bit, yeah. for a little bit, it, but yeah. yes. Now, the positive side is that ever does cross over to esports, there's juked, and that's how we wrap it all up. <laughs> that's we all yes. bring it back. If it does ever get that way. It doesn't matter who ESL or ECS or anyone signs with now because eventually you guys will be able to kind of put them all together in one nice package at juke.gg. Yes, yes. Uh, so uh, I, I don't have any horses in this race, uh, but if, if it no, you, if you bet on all of them, like that's <laughs> yeah, if you're hedging your goes... bets right now. If YouTube goes out and acquires another CSGO tournament exclusively or Mixer or whatever, that's only like that makes us, our value proposition even more um, apparent. But yes. Excellent. Well, Ben, I wanted to thank you again for coming on the show. Uh, like I said, we're big fans of the product, so we're happy to have you on at any time. If you guys ever make another big release, you want to come out and, and tell our listeners about it, just hit us up. We'd love to have you. Again, for our listeners, you already know the website, but it, just in case I need to remind you, it's juked, J-U-K-E-D dot G-G. You can make an account there, but you don't really have to, just to watch it. <laughs> but I'm sure once those preferences and everything drop, that's when you'll really want you'll to have want an to. account. You'll want to. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you, Ben. Yeah. Thanks, thanks so much ben. for having me. I appreciate it. Appreciate thanks, you, dude.